Hello guys and welcome to my Tokyo share house house tour. I have been wanting to do this video for literally the longest time because I know you guys have been really interested on where I'm staying, share house company I'm with, how much I pay and all that stuff. But just for my own privacy and safety reasons, I obviously felt a little bit uncomfortable sharing online my living space because you would definitely be able to find where I live if you tried. <laughs> If you are planning on moving here or relocating whether it's for short term like a three month visa a one month holiday student visa to study abroad or even on a working holiday visa i'm going to try and keep this speedy while the house is empty this right here is the living room slash common space slash kitchen. It is obviously open plan. So this is the biggest area of the house where everyone cooks their food, hangs out. Right now, I'm the only person that works from home. So it's just me. There's a lot of share houses in Tokyo, but I would say the biggest thing that sold me on this place was definitely how bright this space was, which is really, really nice. <laughs> This right here is the fridges. Now how this house works, I obviously don't know if this is how it works in every single house, but at least for my house with 11 residents, we get two big fridges. I use this one. It's pretty random. Like you're not really selected a spot, but you do get given one of these boxes. You use this as your fridge little drawer, but obviously this is very, very small and it doesn't actually fit that much. So we usually just end up using any free space and we usually mark our own individual food with like a marker i've never had an issue there's probably been about maybe one or two times where someone ate my food or accidentally put it in the bin but other than that like it's very straightforward common sense i do wish the freezer was a little bit bigger because for sharing amongst five other people in this space is a little bit tricky now let me explain to you the bin situation because i think this is definitely a very crucial point of living in a japanese household with japanese people living under the japanese laws i guess so when i first moved i was obviously very intimidated because in australia we only have two bins ways to recycle our rubbish burnables and plastics but in japan there are five bins at least where i live in this area of tokyo basically starting from the very right i think it should be the right but anyways the very end one is basically our burnables so anything like food waste food scraps and also like paper and any soft plastics as well that will actually go into the end one there i'm not going to touch that one because that one is very filthy moving over here we have our plastic bottles so we actually have a lot of people who drink bottled water or juice and stuff so you actually have to take the plastic wrapping off the bottle and the cap so yeah as you can see it is just the plastic bottle so everyone likes to squish it like this so that it doesn't take so much room because if nobody squashed them this bin would be getting filled literally every day so yeah it's just something that we do we always make sure to step on it at the end to make it really flat and then pop pop her in there now here is our plastic bin so anything that can be recycled and basically the plastic bottle wrapping and the lid will go into this one and as we move over here we've got this one which is this morning i can't believe i'm putting my hand in the bin but it's not that dirty but this morning i had canned coffee so i obviously put this can in here and then the one to the very end is basically the glass bin so any like condiments jams usually come in glass and that is our bin so everyone follows the rules and as I mentioned before, we have select days of the week where each trash is actually collected. This is the gas top. We also have like a random grill here that not many people use. But yeah, this is really, really nice. Like I mentioned, we never usually clash. Anything that is basically visible is for everyone to use. Obviously quite nice because we have like, like staple ingredients like soy sauce, vinegar, um, oil, and like salt and pepper. By the way, the house came with all of this stuff. So if you're obviously moving countries, this is really ideal because the house comes with a microwave, toaster, kettle, rice cooker. We even have like a hot pot one, which is only usually used during like house parties. <coughs> <laughs> Jesus. And of course, all of the glass and plates came with the house as well. So since moving, I actually haven't had to buy anything. It looks a little bit messy, but it is definitely organized mess because everyone kind of stores some food here. But obviously, we don't really care because it just makes sense for all of us. Now I'll take you to upstairs. I'm not going to show you down there in that much detail because I belong upstairs, but I will show you the laundry. The 
light in this room no longer works no one has bothered to change the light bulb so it's a little bit dark but this is our laundry room we actually have two washing machines which is really really great it's a washing machine and dryer and we leave all of our detergent up there and we just like label it same as food and regarding the washing machines i have literally never had an issue where i've wanted to wash my stuff and both of them were occupied i feel like all of us live very different schedules so we never usually clash so i think two is really really great if you live with about 10 people i would say if you're living with more than 10 people hopefully the house has about three or four but i would say two has been literally amazing <laughs> Now let me take you upstairs and I'll show you basically where I live and where I have been. Second floor is definitely better. So we have some rooms. My room is down there, but this is the second floor toilet. Very, very self-explanatory. So as you come around, this is actually the upstairs shower basin and shower. So I'll show you what that looks like. This is the shower room. Very basic. And what I like to do is I store all of my toiletries in a bag like this. Um, has like my shampoo, body wash, toothbrush, face wash, all that. And I basically just bring in the whole basket, pop it there, do my business and then put it back there. So that's what everyone else does as well. And then we have like bath mats as well that we lay here. But yeah, the shower is actually really, really big. As you can see, I'm like standing in it now. So this could easily fit like three people. I would say, you know, despite sharing upstairs with like even amount of boys, I've actually find it actually really, really clean. I feel like I usually have like my friends like super worried about what sharing a bathroom is like with guys but it's honestly not that bad at all like it's actually great so yeah this is the shower and i'll show you what my room looks like so yeah each room does have locks i literally never lock my door so The room comes with this little storage unit and some hangers. I did have to get my own hangers halfway during my stay because I just go thrifting a lot. <laughs> and the room also comes with that little storage unit here. Obviously the mattress. You can actually choose to hire a doona cover, doona and pillow set. If you're obviously staying here short term, but gratefully I have pillows from my grandma's place and I bought this blanket thing on, on Nitori online because I'm here long term. So yeah, you can also rent out, which is obviously really nice. It comes with with a power bank so sorry about this so gross and it also comes with this really tiny desk actually it's not that bad but i think because i have so much like skincare and makeup it just looks really really small but i can manage to fit my laptop here and use the monitor at the same time but yeah, it comes with a desk and the little lamp there and of course the chair that i'm quite lucky because i had a balcony to myself so i usually do my laundry out here is a bit rough to open and then i have my other balcony that i literally never go out to because we are so close to my neighbors like you can just see like you can literally see into their house and this balcony actually loops all the way around the house <laughs> those of you who have been keeping up with my Japan journey ever since I left Australia to when I first moved in here on my first day, you guys would know that I've honestly had such a good experience. I would say that the first half of my stay was when I really, really found my lifelong best friends and people that I genuinely see myself being friends with for a very, very long time. When I moved in, um, my best friend used to live in this room. I used to live downstairs and she's Spanish and she was here on a student visa for one year. I managed to meet her on her final four months which is so lucky because i literally have her handwriting tattooed on me guys <laughs> she is my person i feel like for most of my teen years early adulthood i never really had like that girl or like that best friend but miraculously coming to the share house i was able to find her and become friends with her and now she's literally like my bestest friend ever she also has my handwriting tattooed on her and believe it or not i'm actually visiting her in two weeks time Prior to obviously leaving Australia, I only knew Australian people. I think it's like very normal for Aussies to only know Aussies because we are so far away from the rest of the world. We don't really get that many like international people. Like everyone around you is either Australian or first gen Australian. I didn't know anyone in Europe and have no friends or relatives in Europe basically. So to think that I am getting on a flight to Europe to visit her in Spain is just insane. And I owe it to this house. And I'm also gonna be meeting up with my best friend who lives in Norway and also another, my best friend who used to live in the UK. So all of us actually found each other in this house and 
and you know even though they moved out at the beginning of the year it's currently November end of November as I'm filming this even though we haven't you know, been living together for a year we are literally like this if you go to one of my old videos i have a vlog of when we went to yamanashi it's like a two-part yamanashi vlog they are my family <laughs> the second half of my stay i would say i wasn't really able to like connect so much with the roommates because i just think we we're like a little bit different and also i just got very very busy with my private life personal life work etc so i'm really glad that when i first moved i had those people and now i get to call them my best friends for life it just like scares me to think that if i never made this move and i never chose this specific share house i never would have brought in my circle and relationships and experiences i can't believe it like if you told me before i left australia that i would be traveling to europe to visit a best friend i'm gonna be reuniting in copenhagen in january of next year so crazy 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 how moving into a share house you can meet your people and like travel to visit them it's just been the best experience of my life and i honestly recommend it to everyone obviously i'm not saying that every share house is like this but i knew in my heart that when i was in australia and i was like journaling and i was like thinking about my time in japan i just knew in my heart that i was gonna find my people and i was gonna have the best fucking experience of my life and i'm so grateful that the butterfly effect just led us all together and i managed to have such such a special experience of my life my time at this share house is definitely Definitely something that I will be telling my kids when I'm older. Yeah, like I just have nothing but love for this place and experience. So, and now going into more like the pricing and how it goes. So, essentially, when I was still in Australia and I put an in interest for this room, uh, the company set up a call with me. I think it was like a Zoom call. Uh, basically, they just want to do. Oh my God, I'm actually just going to put the aircon on. So, I hope it's not too loud. Essentially, I jumped on a Zoom call with them and I explained to them, like, I just introduced myself and I think it's just like the company way of making sure that you are a legitimate person that has legitimate grounds to come to Japan um, and when they approved me and approved my application I basically had to pay a deposit fee and a key fee so this is actually about 50,000 yen that's a little bit expensive considering this is Japan there's a deposit fee that you don't get back I believe but I think you do get like the key fee back if everything oh it's the other way around deposit I think you get half of it back when you leave the house and you do the papers if they check the house one more time and check that your base is not damaged you basically get half of that back so yeah you do have to pay that and you also have to pay your one month's rent when you move so it is a bit of a commitment once you do find the place so you do have to have a little bit of money ready for that as soon as you get approved because these places are very popular we usually have like a new roommate coming in at least every month it's crazy because even before i think there's like there must be like a wait list because it is quite popular but they are actually so 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 many like share houses in Tokyo and personally for me it was never even like an option because I didn't even know they existed I just envisioned like Japan to be like a very conservative you know I just didn't think there were share houses but there actually is and there's actually a lot of companies so highly recommend the one that I went with is Borderless so that is a company that I've been with for my entire stay but I do know friends that have been with Sakura House which is like an all girls one and also Oak House yeah Oak House is another one but all of them are very very welcoming of foreigners if anything they want foreigners because they obviously want foreigners to like engage with the Japanese roommates and just like create like a bit of a like a home community so it's a really really great alternative because as foreigners we obviously are kind of frowned upon it's near impossible to find a place if you're just moving to Japan for the first time as a foreign citizen so 80,000 yen and that's including obviously everything here as well as wi-fi and water and aircon the heater so it is completely inclusive so I personally think it is a little bit expensive there's definitely cheaper ones on the 50 to 60 thousand yen mark but i just fell in love with this house when i was viewing it on the photos when i did the call with them and they showed me like a house tour i just, i literally loved it. it has everything it's obviously really really spacious and bright so i think i've covered everything but basically once a month you just pay the next month's rent um, by bank transfer some people obviously pay at the convenience as well so there's like multiple ways where you can pay the share house company yeah all in all it's really great we also have someone from the company come in and clean our house once a month but we just found that that's not really enough so we usually have like a cleaning schedule so we have like a daily roster um, of one person cleaning basically the common space so if there is anything else that I've missed on please let me know in the comments I'd be happy to help other than that make sure to give this video a like if 
you found this helpful and i can definitely make more videos that is a little bit more focused on my personal experience here and make sure to subscribe i'm going to be posting content every single week but if you made it this far i love you so much and thank you so much and i'll see you in my next one Bye.